Hello and welcome to this video where we will have hopefully a quick run through of some of the key presidents of the United States from 1929 to 2000. Now our unit mentions some presidents specifically so we've concentrated on those here and that's why we don't mention all of the presidents. Where there are links to others though that come under say the Cold War or the foreign policy we've added those in green. The main purpose of this video is the domestic policies, however where there are key links to foreign policy we've just underlined those in green. The presidents highlighted in red are Republican presidents and the ones in blue are Democrats, so you can see how the power of office changes across the century. Let's start with Hoover then. We know about Hoover and his connections to the Great Depression. He was president when the Wall Street crash hit. He was criticised for his reaction to the Great Depression, but he did actually put some good things in place. And some of his policies were then taken up and expanded on by his successor, Roosevelt. As a Republican, Hoover had the ideals of rugged individualism and laissez-faire. So he, when he was responding to the Great Depression, he was doing so with that kind of background. Some of the important things he did, though, was to put support in for farmers. For example, the Hawley Smoot Tariff Act, which made it cheaper to buy produce created in the US rather than buy from other countries. He cut taxes, he put emergency relief in place. However, his uh, reputation was really damaged by the bonus marchers incident where Hoover had to take the blame for the use of the army and violence and then the injuries and deaths to some of the bonus marchers. In 1932, the Roosevelt won an absolute landslide election. He brought a real kind of fresh approach to the Great Depression. And whilst Hoover had been a successful businessman, Roosevelt gave a whole different outlook. He came across as much more approachable. He was very popular because he'd overcome adversity and illness to rise to the office of president. He brought with him a new promise, a new deal. So this incorporates the three R's of relief, recovery, reform. And across the first hundred days of his presidency, the alphabet agencies were set up, fireside chats happened, and all of this helped to boost morale and confidence in the government. In 1935, though, a second New Deal was needed because whilst unemployment had gone down, the problems weren't entirely solved. And this was a really important piece of legislation. It included the Social Security Act, which was the government accepting basic responsibility for basic living standards of its citizens. Roosevelt was the president for almost all of America's involvement in World War II. He set up the War Production Board because his idea was that they would win World War II by out-resourcing the enemy. So the War Production Board was to coordinate the boost of industry that would mean that when the enemy ran out of tanks, aircraft, ammunition, etc., USA and their allies would be able to continue. Roosevelt died in April 1945 and uh, Truman took over the presidency. He talked about a fair deal for the American people. With a link to the Cold War element of the course then, Truman was the guy behind the Truman Doctrine um, with the fear of the domino theory and then the implication of the uh, implementation of the Marshall Plan. Eisenhower took over after Truman, and it was Eisenhower who sent the military to support the Little Rock Nine as, in, in, as part of the civil rights part of this course. Okay, the next really key president that we need to know about is John F. Kennedy, JFK. His major domestic strategy was something called the New Frontier, and that incorporated three themes civil rights, the economy, and social reform. Kennedy also had really strong links with civil rights campaigners such as Martin Luther King, and they were preparing the Civil Rights Act. Kennedy was also the leader um, for the US while the Cuban Missile Crisis was going on as part of the Cold War. Now, Kennedy was assassinated in 1963, so never got to see the Civil Rights Act come to fruition. His vice president became president after that, President Johnson, and it was him that signed the Civil Rights Act in 1964. 
Johnson, as a Democrat, carried on with a lot of the ideas of the New Frontier, this time calling it the Great Society. But this had the same three main themes, civil rights, economy and social reform. Johnson also connects to the Vietnam War and it was through protest and criticism of America's involvement in Vietnam that he made his decision not to stand for re-election in 1968. We get then a change of political party. In 1969, Nixon becomes president. Now he's perhaps most famous or infamous for the Watergate scandal. This was to do with bugging of the Watergate offices, the Democrat offices, with an attempt to um, gain information that would support the Republican campaign. Nixon had to resign in 1974 to avoid being impeached. Following this, there were changes in the power of the government and extra checks put in place to make sure that this type of event shouldn't happen again. Nixon has strong links to the Cold War, um, and particular to the detente phase with SALT I agreements and visits to China and to Moscow. Another president that we don't look at in great detail but comes into the Cold War theme is President Carter. He was uh, president in reaction to the, to the USSR's invasion of Afghanistan and developed the Carter Doctrine, which is a really hard-line stance against the USSR after that invasion in 1979. The next president that we learn about in more detail, though, is President Reagan, another Republican president. Now, his economic policy was nicknamed Reaganomics. The idea was that if taxes were cut for the very rich, then they would have more spending power and then the benefits of them spending in the economy would trickle down to the middle and the lower classes. The problem with this though is that it ended up increasing the national debt massively and put the country into a severe recession. And those economic problems were then inherited by later presidents and it took a long time for the problem to be dealt with. Reagan also faced some other really difficult problems while he was president. In 1986, there were huge disasters in terms of the US space program, and the, including the Challenger explosion. And these disasters meant that Reagan had to delay plans to develop a permanent orbital space station. His reputation was damaged when he said that damage to the environment was a price to pay if the nation wanted to strengthen its economy. And he initially resisted the idea of having a national holiday to, holiday to commemorate Martin Luther King's birthday. So these ideas really damaged his reputation. However, some positives. Aside from being initially um, reluctant to do this, he did fund through the government a huge amount of research into AIDS during his presidency. And he declared a war on drugs in order to tackle drug-related uh, problems throughout the USA. Reagan also has um, big connections to the Cold War theme in terms of his relationship with Gorbachev, which was initially uh, negative, but then turned much more positive. Um, and it was Reagan who had the policy of the Strategic Defense Initiative, or the Star Wars plan. The next key president to look at then is George Bush Senior. He initially promised that he would be able to keep taxes low, but he had to go back on that promise and actually ended up raising indirect taxes. Unemployment was also really high during his presidency. Other problems he had to face were significant race riots in 1992 in cities such as Los Angeles and Seattle and Chicago, and there was little impact into the drug problem across the US. However, some real positives in his presidency included the Americans with Disability Act in 1990 and the Clean Air Act of 1990 as well. It was George Bush Sr. who oversaw the end of the Cold, Cold War with his really positive relationship with the um, leader of the USSR, Gorbachev. The final president that we're going to have a look, then, look at then is Clinton. Clinton becomes president in 1993. You can see that he's a Democrat. And there were three major areas that we can categorise his domestic policies into. Firstly, a move away from Reaganomics. And that move away from Reaganomics meant that under his presidency, the US saw the biggest, most sustained economic growth for that century. 
So there were some real positive improvements in terms of the economy under Clinton. He also focused time on welfare and social reforms, for example, establishing a minimum wage, which was later then raised. He also put funding into healthcare for mothers and newborns, and the infant mortality rate drops dropped quite significantly to the lowest rate ever recorded in the USA whilst he was president. However, there are definitely negatives to his presidency, um, which was characterised by scandals that he was involved with. Firstly, we've got the Whitewater scandal of 1996, and this was to do over potential fraud to do with housing development. This dragged on for a number of years, and there was actually no, and never any conclusive evidence that him and or his wife had been involved in illegal dealings. More damaging to Clinton, though, was the Lewinsky affair. Clinton had an affair with Monica Lewinsky, and she was a member of the White House staff. However, under oath, he lied about this and said that he'd never had any kind of relationship or a personal relationship with her. This was found to be a lie and he um, was impeached with his, with his uh, reputation being damaged significantly. He was then acquitted of the impeachment charges and he went on to apologise to the nation saying that he was profoundly sorry for his actions.